Ah, so you want to know how I make these Instagram car videos? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how I make this one. So my five step process for editing these car videos is as follows. Music selection. You best believe I'm figuring out what song I'm editing to beforehand. As this is an Instagram reel, I start by scrolling through my feed until I hear one that slaps. But wait Camillo, what if I'm doing these videos for a client or my YouTube channel? I can't use copyrighted music. Shh, take this. If you want royalty free music that doesn't sound like this. <laughs> Then you need to try Epidemic Sound, the sponsor of this video. They have 35,000 professionally produced tracks with a wide variety of artists and genres. For example, as a Latino, si quiero un poquito de salsita. Oh geez, they actually have a whole category for us and over 90,000 sound effects for adding sound design to your videos, as we will do later. If you're a creator, their personal plan will cover you on social platforms, but if you're a freelancer, with their commercial plan, you and your clients can hit that upload button without worry of getting sued for copyright infringement. Their platform is made for creators like you and me in mind, making it super easy to find the perfect song. I literally use the app the same way I use Spotify. And when I find a song that I like, I just add it to a playlist. Plus, the find similar feature is great if I want to find songs that are similar to the ones that I like. If you want a free 30 day trial, just click the link below. So once I have my song, I play it back multiple times and add markers to highlight edit points using this key on my keyboard. It makes sure that you don't cut at an offbeat. You never want to be offbeat. When you're going through this, you want to be imagining where effects could happen such that the audience can get that satisfying <laughs> shot selection. Now, let's be honest, I'm not perfect. Sometimes I f up when I'm filming. Like a lot of these were shot horizontally, which makes them very hard to frame vertically. The movement could be off. Maybe I'm too shaky. Sometimes I look like I changed my mind halfway through the movement. <laughs> As a result, when I scrub through the footage, I look for the following, good framing, good composition, constant movements that I can maybe speed ramp through like this shot here and shot variety. With that in mind, I throw those shots in the timeline and then we align the shots to the music, which is step three. So my aim for the intro is to make it as hooky as possible. That may be by using the best shots first rather than saving them for the end or using quick cuts to the song. But I'm also thinking about how things will transition to and from each other. So I do basic speed ramps just for speed sake. These will get dialed in on the next stage. But I may also add placeholders. For example, when the beat drops, I knew I wanted this shot to appear, but I wanted the logo from it to pop up and land as soon as it drops. So I put a placeholder for it. And I did another placeholder for this wheel that I wanted to spin into frame before the shot. I may swap clips around if I feel they can flow better, like these two clips here. At this point, we have a nice sequence of shots that are synchronized to the music. Time for FX. For this one, I wanted it to start with clean, sexy shots, and then when the beat drops, things get a bit more wild. So I focused on dialing in my speed ramps using my secret technique. Actually, it's no longer a secret. Then for the effect right at the drop, I took this rough mask, opened it on After Effects, and I keyframed it coming from the bottom, added some Bezier curves, and the most important part, motion blur. Smooth. Then, because I thought it was a bit basic, I duplicated the logo, dragged in the Sabre plugin, changed the core type to layer mask, composite settings to transparent, used the preset nebula, and now we have a Sabre outline on our effect. I animated this further by keyframing the end offset setting to open up around the logo. And boom. <laughs> Alright. It doesn't really hit, does it? So I decided to add a pulse distortion effect when the logo lands on the next shot to really give it that mm. If you're wondering how I did this, I taught it in this video. Then I took this rough mask of the wheel, opened it in After Effects, keyframed a simple movement from the left and added a wheel spin. Obviously, man checked. Motion blur. And then on Premiere Pro, I added a luma fade so that the rest of the shot came into place in a smoother way. <laughs> That brings us to color and sound design. Ah, the filmmaking staples. If you want your clips to really stand out, spend some time on the grade. Take that shitty log footage and add that contrast, that saturation. Make sure the highlights don't peak, the shadows don't crush. And finally, use my LUDs from the creator pack club. <laughs> 
with the colors looking oh, beautiful. Let's find some sound effects to highlight actions in the video. For example, when the handle pops out of the car, I added a drill effect. The sound of the engine from the day. I also layered some swoosh and fire sounds for the rise of the logo and then a big hit when it lands. And also a sound of tires breaking when the tire slides in. And when that's done, we render it and send it to Instagram. But before you do that, if you want to guarantee that you're going to get high quality uploads, then you should definitely watch this video here. If you want the final project file of this personal edit of mine, check out the link below. I'll see you in the next video.